Hit him, a little, hit him. I learned a lot from this project. I learned how to interview people. I learned how to relate to people. I learned how to listen to people. And I learned how to work with the technology and stuff and be technical engineer. I've never been taped before. And I've never been on the radio with a microphone in front of me. And I ain't never met as many people as I met at once. And I ain't never been in a radio station. So it was fun doing new things. Most significantly, the girls are learning about their history and about our history here in Champaign. And they're learning about their past and how it impacts who they are today. And they're asking questions. I'm hearing them ask questions about their peers, about themselves, about their futures, that I don't think they would have had an opportunity to ask. What do you think of the school systems today? School systems today, they could do um, a lot better. And I think it's a lot of seven girls from Champaign's Franklin Middle School spent seven months with WILL, recording stories from community elders about the history of racial segregation and integration in their hometown. Their project was inspired by the 50th anniversary of the Brown v. Board decision that made segregation in the public schools illegal. The students comb through archival materials at the Urbana Free Library and the News Gazette and compared what they found to what they'd learned from their interview subjects and their own school experiences. Initially when the girls began um, the process, they kind of just read over, summarized um, comments that were made, it took a while for them to be able to get into the data, to really analyze it, compare it to their own experiences. Um, think about it in context of the newspaper articles that we've done during our research process. So it really helped them to sharpen their analytical skills, to grow with their research abilities, um, and really to compare their life with the lives of the uh, interviewees. We always just talk about African Americans, like in the month of February since it's Black History Month. And um, we always learn about the same, like, three people. And um, they think that we're learning new stuff, but it's the same every year. And so this, I got a lot more out of this. This is enrichment education at its best. This is taking us out. This is taking the classroom and stretching it. WILL has been teaching this group of dedicated students how to interview, how to record and edit, and how to write for radio. The availability is there, whereas before the availability wasn't there. Before, say, the, the schools in the black neighborhoods and things, you, you might get books that other buildings didn't want. I thought that we were going to do more book work. I didn't think that we would be really interviewing as many people as we got to interview. I thought that we might be going to the library looking up Brown versus, versus Board of Education things on the computer and looking in books. But it turned out to be like interviews and finding things out from the community and I really like that. I learned how to do follow-up questions and everything, but my first interview to my mom actually was really choppy. And if I, I'm sure if I listened to it now, I would think it was sort of funny compared to what I did. You had to actually be a people person because then you, the person wouldn't feel comfortable with you, and you might not get the stuff that you need out of that person. So you had to actually open up to that person as soon as you meet them. I got the feeling that they were very impressed because we talk about things they certainly have no knowledge of. You know, as I explained to them, the schools that I attended no longer exist. And the one young lady that interviewed me when we got into the interview, or when she came down to introduce herself, recognized me. We both attend the same church. That put her very much at ease. It's good to know that they're not the first ones to face these challenges, and that, that those of us who went before them faced those challenges plus greater challenges. If you wanted to work in JCPenney, you had to do all the cleaning and janitorial jobs and things, and you weren't able to like check people out and things and I didn't I mean it was like shocking because I never like I wasn't there in that time so I would never dream of 
like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, anyone being treated like that. What did I say? That's an hour and 14 minutes yeah, into it. It must be right here. Wow, okay. School of choice and school access, he did. The students mastered editing using the latest digital audio technology. When I had came one night on the production to do production with Kimberly, it was like, it was kind of hard, and then it wasn't. It was like trying to learn how to, um, like, edit out parts of the um, interview. But, I mean, I caught on very fast. I think that it's really exciting when lights go on over their heads and they have that aha experience and they really begin to see what it is to put a particular piece of radio together in an exciting way that makes a lot of sense. It makes a connection with the listener. And when they do that, it, br it brings back the moments in my life when I first had aha radio experiences and it keeps me young. Learning how to make good radio is but one goal of the project. Engaging students, teachers, community members, and public broadcasters to support African Americans in our schools is the project's larger vision. There's been a lot of discussion um, just in regards to the community's concern about young folk, i.e. the hip hop generation today and them not valuing um, 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 responsibility, um, sacrifices, things of that nature. And my thing is, they're kids. Um, it's, it's the communities and the adults' roles in the community to educate them on the process and find the way to engage them. I know that if you're going to address the hip-hop generation, you need to speak to them within that particular language and engage them in that pattern and not be afraid of it, reclaim it. And so, Having the project serve that particular role has been critical because you have youth who may see um, uh, more mature community members in different settings uh, dialoguing about what their educational experiences were at the same school that they attend. And they start hearing these, these behaviors and expectations. My thing is to re-engage re youth today to understand that it's unacceptable not to achieve and that you have a long history of achievement, but they need to hear it from like-minded folk or from folk from in the community that have walked that same path. The students' complete interviews and hour-long radio program will be donated to area libraries to become source material for future student and adult researchers. I've seen these girls mature in so many ways. They have more self-confidence. They even carry themselves differently in the building. Um, and they rose to the occasion. They began sending out um, letters to the other girls to remind them we have a meeting this day have you done your homework for this the next um, person you're going to interview um, their academics their grades have increased and I think when you build self-confidence in students and let them see that they can do things with assistance um, that they just blossom in every way when they first started they didn't know anything about interviewing. They didn't know how to use technology to capture those interviews, how to edit those interviews down. And we told them they could do it. We said, you can do this and we will show you how. And then you'll show other students how to do it. So the process was always teach one and have that one teach others so that you have that peer educational role as part of this whole process. When I first got my press badge, um, students I used to wear it all the time, no matter if we had it or not. So um, students would grab the badge and be like, what's this for, what's this for? And I'd be like, WIO radio program, and they'd be like, what's that? And I'd tell them about it, and then they'd be like, okay, so what's that now? Then I'd just get more interested in it. I now, I talk to more people than what I used to, and um, I'm now getting along with the um, people that I'm working with, and I have learned more about things I wouldn't think I would learn about. Like what? Um, hooking up the computers and interviewing people, because when I first heard that we were interviewing people, I was scared, but once you get in there, it's really easy. We've had confrontations throughout the program, and I mean, now that's just like all in the past, and we're, I can tell that everybody in the uh, program is maturing, because like our little confrontations, that were in the past, we uh, 
we've got over those. And before I came up here, we were just all downstairs in a conference room just to laughing and giggling. It was very nice. A lot of these people that we interviewed, they were to told to take shopping, cooking and stuff, and they were told they weren't college material. And so that, and since this project and hearing all those other people's stories, I said I was going to make sure that I myself was college material. Well, I take my education um, more seriously, and um, because I learned how, like, what other people went through, and I'm like, well, I should, I have this opportunity to, you know, grow up and be somebody, so I should take this more seriously. And I'm in the honors program, and you know, I'm like, well, back then. There's no way that an African-American student would have been in the honor program. And now I'm like, well, I'm in an honors program. And, like, people work so hard for me to even, you know, go to school and be in the same school as white kids. So that's, like, I take my education, like, really seriously. Not that I didn't take it seriously before, but now I know that people actually worked hard, and, you know, and, like, stressed their stuff out, you know to get me where I am today so I can go to school and I can learn.